Greetings. This is Ray Fisher, the CEO of AHA, and uh, I'm going to be presenting to you about uh, ideas and concept testing on the AHA platform. Just a little quick backgrounder. I'm going to actually show you all of the tools today uh, that we're going to share from our actual platform. So you're going to see this little preview thing pop up. This is normally not in the view um, when respondents do any kind of activities, but um, this is going to be shown to you as if you were a, an actual respondent. So again, Ray Fisher, native Detroiter, broadcasting to you from Detroit right now. Uh, just to give you a little background on me and how I got into research, um, I was a basically a user or a buyer uh, back in the 90s and 80s when I was at Pepsi as a brand manager and uh, got my technology immersion in the dot-com bubble and bust of 98 to 02. Got into focus group moderating in uh, 2002 and um, eventually became a rest tech pioneer in 2005 we started developing our first online uh, platform called Living Diary. We launched AHA in 2012, 2013, have been growing aggressively ever since then. And of note, one of our biggest claims to fame is that we were Zoom's first global integration partner to give us the option to do live IDIs and focus groups and in-store trips. We did that integration in 2019, very fortuitous as COVID hit just about six months after we did that integration. So we were in prime position digitally for asynchronous and live work. All right, so a little bit about our company, quick commercial here. So we are a rest tech company. Um, so we do a lot of different things and we were born on the asynchronous side of things with asynchronous qual under the AHA banner. We integrated Zoom in to be able to do focus groups, um, IDIs and uh, live shop alongs in 2019, as I mentioned. And then last year, we uh, signed a partnership licensing agreement with Qualtrics. So we're able to do hybrid studies that go back and forth between Qual and Quant. We're going to spend most of our time on the Qual side of things today with some definite options for Quant wherever it might be possible. You'll see some of those examples as I walk through things today. Okay, so that's us. That's our REST tech stack. And that's how we do things. So let's go to the next slide here come down here and next and the things we do so we essentially you know we can be DIY or full service the DIY side we've got many clients that actually do all the programming run everything themselves do the consulting we have all the tools to help you do that ourselves and the people that can do that and on the full service side if you do need consulting help um, we bring in star moderators that use our platform you know as one of our clients so if you do need any kind of analytic support we can bring somebody in to bring that uh, full service approach to you. Okay, so the things we do, we do study design. We will help you with your study design. We will do the complete study design if you need us to do so. We will program. Uh, we probably program 85% of all of our studies. Make sure that everything is perfect the way you want it and optimizes the use and tools of all of the platform's capabilities. We can recruit. I think we recruit about 55 or 60% of all of our studies these days. And in that case, we use partners. We do not have our own panel. We use the best in class, depending on what the recruiting needs are that you have either on the qualitative side or on the quantitative side. We do project managers as well. You're assigned a dedicated project manager. That person knows the platform. That person is available to you. They will help you run your study. Make sure you get the highest level of participation with super high quality um, responses as well. And in translation, we do international work. Um, we don't do much on the live front. We basically stay domestic US on live interviewing with IDIs and, um, and focus groups. But um, we do asynchronous work around the world. We can handle it soup to nuts from translation of guides to programming, to running the study and to helping you with the analytics if you need it, okay? So that's who we are. And then what we do, these are the things we do most frequently. So digital ethnos, concept testing, which we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about today. Um, home use tests, customer experience journeys, those are generally the longer term studies, ones that run, you know, three months, six months, a year, multiple years, et cetera. We do a lot of journaling and usage diary work. And some of those are weaved into other studies, um, other types of studies and methodologies. We do a lot of mobile missions, both live and asynchronous, global research, as I mentioned. We do a lot of focus groups and the pre-focus group homework that precedes those groups or IDIs. And we do a lot of innovation and new product development work which obviously lends itself into concept development and idea testing. And then finally, we do custom methodologies. So if you come up with some approach that we don't do, 
we probably have the tools to weave it together to make it happen. Um, and if we don't, we're happy to listen to what you need and see if we can't code it out for you. Okay. So that's the things that we do most frequently. All right. So while we're here, we're here to talk about testing ads, concepts, and packaging using AHA Insights technology. So I'm going to take you through lots of different examples. Think of our platform. We've got a lot of tools. I'm not going to show you every single one of them. I'm going to show you the ones that lend themselves to testing ads, concepts, and packaging. So I'll show you those. And then know that I look at the platform as basically a tapestry. And all the tools and pieces and parts that we have within the platform can be woven together to create that tapestry. So it really is, you know, a, a work of art, you know, taking the tools and pieces to make the best possible study that you can, you can field. So I'll start off with uh, multi-day studies. Almost every concept test we do, if you do them in the quant world, you're usually doing them in one sitting, you know, surveys, maybe it's, it's monadic and you're doing many different cells. Um, but on the qual side, it's typically multi-day studies, okay? Um, what we do, and we know the best way to do this is to spread things out. Often clients come to us with four, six, eight, 10, 12 ideas. Usually it's not too many more than that. But you don't want to show that many ideas to respondents each individual day. What you do want to do is show two or three ideas max. There are situations where you might do more. But again, if you're going to do a deep dive qual, you're going to want to focus on two or three ideas. Because what happens is it increases focus when you have them just look at a couple of ideas each day versus a bunch of them. Um, because what sets in after they see a bunch is, is fatigue and blur. And on the fatigue and blur side, what happens is they get tired and they start writing less and less. After you get past that second or third idea, they give you less depth, shorter responses, and then blur sets in. So if they're on the fourth idea, if you throw four at them in a day, they might start writing about the first and third idea as well as the fourth as they're looking at the fourth idea. So we like to think two or three per day, um, you know, reduces that fatigue and blur factor, gets you increased focus and gets your, your best engagement level from respondents. And again, those activities tend to be 20 to 30 minutes in length when it's a concept testing arena. And then also just to get a look at how things are, what you'll eventually or usually have is, is an introduction activity. Um, you'll also have, you know, the ideas that you want to test. And these are rotated. I'm going to talk to you about that in a second, about the unique tool, true rotation that we have to make that happen. So generally, you know, let's say it's a three-day study. They might look at a couple of ideas each day. And then on the final day, like let's say when everything's all done, you may launch a comparative activity where they go through, you know, all the ideas that they've seen. They'll talk a little bit more about those and also rank them. So I'll show you some of that in just a few minutes. So let's start out with true rotation concept testing. So this is a, a static example here, and it's a quant qual example. So it's gonna lead with a little bit of quant, then go to qual and then have a little deeper um, quant piece to it, okay? So the line of questioning, obviously for each concept you're gonna show is gonna be identical. True rotation is a, a technological tool we have on the back end that allows us to rotate ideas over multiple days. So they show up in the, let's say one through nine position equally. So think of it as if you had 30 or 36 respondents in a study, you have nine ideas, it goes four days. Those first three days, they're gonna see those nine ideas. Those nine ideas will show up in the one through nine position equally. So you'll have no rotational bias whatsoever and it'll be perfectly balanced rotation. That fourth day, what you'll have is a, usually a set of all the ideas again, where they can do a little bit of re review and they can then go ahead and, and rank those and tell you why they picked their favorite, okay? And usually that's a separate activity for the end. Again, a four-day study, nine ideas, three per day, and the fourth day at the end for the wrap-up, okay? So true rotation, we'll make sure you have no order bias whatsoever. Here's a little quant example here. Um, usually, even in a qual study, if you've got 28 people, 50 people, whatever, or if you've got 200, it's fine to go ahead and drop in a little slider scale, Okay to get a sense of like how much they actually like an idea. Helps you sort your data on the back end, makes it a little easier for you to separate the ones from the fives and really see what the extreme reactions were. But again, it kind of gets them into the process. They, they rate it um, and then they answer the questions. You're like, why did you rate it as you did? Uh, tell us what you liked most about this idea. If you could change something, what would it be? And then you can drop into some of the more quant specific 
um, you know, uh, closed end of responses that, you know, judge things on first impressions and, you know, how well do things fit with the brand that you're researching and does the package design pair fit with what, you know, what you might expect with this particular example here of natural fruit juice products. Okay. So there's a little quant qual example there. And then moving right along into static exposure. And this is a timed response approach. So think of moderators who are listening right now or anybody who's seen a focus group. When a moderator holds up a board and then they say, okay, let's take a look at this for 20 seconds or so, you have the ability to do that online too. So you can set a timer for this image to disappear. So imagine a moderator holding a board. They let you look at it for a little bit of time or let the respondents look at it. Then they set it down and then they ask you, okay, what do you remember? what did you like? What didn't you like? This is a replication of that approach where that idea, as you just saw, disappeared. It cannot be refreshed. It cannot be shown again. And they will tell you what their initial visceral reactions were. You know, what did you like? What didn't you like? And anything they might have noticed with that idea. So that's called timed response. Um, another tool that's very popular uh, on our platform and in concept testing is uh, concept markup. We have a ton of markup tools. You'd never use them all. The most um, important and most used one is the highlighter tool. I'll show you that in a couple of seconds on a more uh, text-based concept. And then also you've got things like stars. So it might put, be put a star next to the most important thing on the page. You can drop text in and, and talk about something that you do or don't like on here. So they can come in and go ahead and type in what they think and feel. They can point arrows to things that might be super important to them. They can go ahead and twist and turn things as they want. And then another popular tool is our freehand drawing tool. So they can come in and mark things up. So also know that we've got some sophisticated heat mapping tools. I'll touch on those in a few seconds and a little bit uh, closer to the end of this presentation. Okay, so that's our concept markup tool. Again, anytime you do concept markup, um, those concepts also can be rotated with our true rotation tool. Okay, so this is an example of positive and negative reactions using the highlighter tool. Okay. So in this case here, we're giving them the green highlighter for positive, the red highlighter for negative. So with words, they can do this independently or they can do this together. And I'll just do a random set here of positive commentary. Okay, I like the word easy. Happy is also a cool thing. And protected might be good too in this particular case. So let's go over here now, let's go mark it up with the negatives. So we might come in and say, ah, oh, maybe somebody doesn't like family time. They're not into joy. So maybe they don't like enjoyable and they're not into sunscreen products. So let's X that out too. So these are the positives. Those are the negatives. This will all lead to heat maps and I'll show you that stuff in a few minutes. All right. So moving right along here, then you got a line of questioning. So you could ask them about the green. You can ask them about the red and then you can go ahead and um, have them continue on to a next step. Maybe it's a different approach, a different look, a different line of questioning around that particular idea, or they move on to the next idea, okay? This is another approach we've got, and this is for um, packaging. So when you talk about packaging, we do a lot of package concept uh, studies. In this case here, we've got the ability to play a CAD drawing. So this is the example of a CAD drawing actually can be manipulated by the respondent. They can go in, grab it, move it around, look closer at ingredient copy, blow that up, take a good peek at that, let it roll, stop it, whatever they want to do. So again, I'll spin that around just for fun. But that's the ability to go do concept testing for packaging using CAD drawings and CAD renderings. So know that we have the capability to do that. That's an interesting approach. It gets used quite a bit. Um, and we encourage you to think about that next time you do a packaging test to have the designers actually give you CAD renderings to do a little bit of testing with, all right? So this is static packaging evaluation, very similar here to just the um, bottle example I showed you earlier, but you've got the ability to show anything you want. Sometimes we even do actual ad campaigns with outdoor, print, um, Instagram ads, video, et cetera, all put together on the same page or go step-by-step -step approach. In this case, just a big blow up of a Starbucks package that makes me crave a cup of coffee. And then there's a line of questioning. Anything you guys wanna do and know that we have a bunch of templates and I'm gonna show you some of those as we go through this today, okay? So they're gonna go through, they're gonna describe things. So again, you can ask any line of questioning that you want. You can mix in some quant for sure. And again, even in a smaller study, sometimes directional uh, quant is good. 
Um, and if you're in a larger scale study too, you could do that on our platform and, and do all the quant till the cows come home. And it could be all quant if you did want. But again, more focused on a little bit of qual and qual quant today. Okay. When we talk about live concept testing, we've got the ability to show any kind of idea you want, screen share. Up here, you see a moderator actually directing and talking to a client or a respondent through the actual idea that is in play here. In this case, it was a website review. And then another cool thing that we have is for people in the back room to actually be able to timestamp things. So clients can actually come in, timestamp, you know, really key comments that may have happened. And this will be tied into the transcripts as well. Um, we also have backroom chat, uh, just for your information, in our Zoom integration. And then we've got positive and negative um, emojis or icons that you can timestamp things with thumbs up, thumbs down, or maybe a question that you want to look up later. Okay. So we've got all the fully fleshed out ability to do live concept testing online. Again, you can use True Rotation. You can use the concept markup tools. Anything is in play live or asynchronous. But in this case, this is our custom approach to sharing ideas, you know, via a moderator with a respondent in an IDI or a focus group. Okay. So that's the live approach to testing ideas. Another key thing to understand too, is that there is the ability to ask a multitude of questions. You can ask open-ended questions till the cows come home. There are lots of different approaches to do that. Lots of different question styles. I'm going to take you through some of these in some detail. So you kind of get a sense of the options that are available to you. Some are what I call very pragmatic and straightforward. Some are a little bit more what we call narrative style. We've got a bunch of templates that we can always share with you. So in any case, when you come to us for the study, a concept testing study, you may know exactly what you want to do and the line of question you want to do it. And I can assure you that we have all the tools to address things the way you would do them. Um, but also know that if you're either newer to doing concept testing or you're looking for new approaches to the ways you've done things in the past, We've got tried and true methods um, that are around, again, straight ahead, pragmatic question style, and then also open-ended style that's more narrative that gets people to be a little bit more creative and thoughtful um, and a little bit more, I'll call, psychological in their response. So let's go through some of those examples right now. So this is pragmatic open ends. Okay, in this case, we would have a video here. It says BGT video, which would be here. I'm not going to share that right now. But what I do want to share is the line of questioning that I will uh, phrase as pragmatic. Okay. So in this line, they would watch the video. Then they'll go ahead and, and answer the questions. You know, what thoughts, feelings, or impressions do you have about the advertising you saw? What came to mind? And then please explain. And by the way, if you ever want to force word counts, we can do that. So if you have like character limits, you want to make sure they give us at least 250 characters, for instance, on each response, we can force that so there is depth. We typically don't have to do that, but that option is available to you. So the next question here is like, what's the main idea of this ad? What is the ad trying to tell you? Then down here, you're gonna have the ability to have them respond via slider scale of their reaction, how much they love it or they hate it. And again, you get charts and graphs around all this stuff at the end of the study. Again, in qual directional, if you got, you know, over 100 people, obviously you can start sharing statistical numbers that have some relevance. And then the next open end is now, why did you give that ad rating uh, that you did? Please explain. Again, another slider bar here. In your opinion, how useful is the information or material to you personally uh, that they saw in that video? And they'll go ahead and rate that as well. And then they'll respond to that. Now you gave the ad this rating. Again, why? Okay, great line of questioning here, very pragmatic, straight ahead, just trying to get reactions to people's feelings and forcing them to use some quant measures so that you get an understanding of where they really feel. Because if they're at a four, you know, eh, it's obviously, say, you know, nothing, it's pretty average, obviously. And if they're a one or a seven, those are more extremes. And sometimes those are the reasons, and sometimes even the average answers, you may just, you know, follow up with a probe and we've got probing tools on the platform where you can actually just ask them, hey, um, tell me a little bit more. You know, you rated it a seven, but you didn't write about it that positively. Can you tell me where the disconnection is there? So again, you can dive in with, with probes at that point in time. Then we've got something that we call narrative open-end style. So again, somebody come in, play the video. All right, and again, we can limit it to one showing if you want to. Uh, usually people let them play them as many times as they want. But oftentimes, um, you know, sometimes we actually have clients that say, 
I want one show, one reaction, and that's it. Sort of like the timed response approach I showed you earlier. So in this case here, we've got the ability to go in and ask open-ended questions. Again, a little different style, more of a narrative style here. To begin with, um, we'd like you to write a short sentence or phrase that sums up this brand video. You might think of this as if you had to write a short summary title or headline for this video, what would it be? Next question. Next, tell me what you remember from this video. What specific scenes, visuals, or things you heard that do you remember seeing or hearing? What sticks in your mind? Then tell me what thoughts as you watch this video, fully describe your thoughts, emotions, associations, and feelings. So again, you're really pushing deeper into this. And then down here, this gets a little bit more narrative. You know, Please bring this video to life in your own words uh, based on what it's saying to you. So now you're asking to basically tell you a little bit of a story and then even better, as you dive into narrative style, you've got, please paint a picture of the person, the type of person who would find this video very interesting. So this kind of gets themselves out of their own skin. You know, tell me about the person's lifestyle, attitude towards life, and the role that, that cat, the category plays in their lives. Okay. So narrative style, different approach, went from pragmatic to narrative. Okay. Now, oftentimes, too, you've got the ability at the end of a study to go in and have them concept rank. So they can rank things, and obviously I can go rank that one. I can rank this one four. I can play around with it, but there is the ability to concept rank. So as I mentioned earlier, a three-day study, nine ideas. At the end, on the fourth day, you represent all of the ideas, have them rank them and tell them, ask them why they picked the one that they picked as their favorite. And maybe you want to ask a little bit about the one they picked as their least favorite. All right, so you've got comparative wrap-up ideas other than that. So in this case here, you can come in and go ahead and show uh, new concepts or show the concepts again, excuse me, this is a comparative wrap up activity. So you show your concepts again, let them look at those. We'll also rotate these by the way, so they won't show up in the same order every time. Then they'll come in here and they'll go ahead and pick their favorite. Then they'll tell you why they picked that as their favorite. And then you'll, you can go a little bit deeper and say, I just make you more interested in the brand in some way. If so, how? So you, again, longer, deeper line of questioning. You can go ahead and have them do a little rating scale as well. Again, you can mix and match all the different tools that you want. Explain the rating, of course, always a great way to do things. Again, a little bit of a different comparative activity approach. Okay. So this one's about perceptions. So in some cases, some people may actually use a word or attributes that people can actually roll through. You can see them all if you want to open up the gallery. So we've got a tool here that allows them to go ahead and use these different words. So what they can do here is go grab the words that make sense and come in here, drop them onto our little canvas, and then explain why they picked those words that they did. Okay. So again, you can use words, images, et cetera, to go deeper into why people said, thought, felt different things. And again, this is a way to figure out perceptions having them use words. So again, think of this as a ranking exercise if you want, but also you've got the ability here to go in and type in your response to whatever attribute that you actually selected. So they can go in and type right onto the canvas, whatever it is they feel, why they position this particular um, attribute, where they did, and explain it in more depth. And again, any line of question you want to proceed down after that, again, dropping in the, the rating scale, as, to, as to their purchasing likelihood and then explaining the rating. So again, a little different approach, using attribute words, letting them rank those out, explaining why they picked the words they did that might be associated with the concept that you may have shown on a previous page. Okay, um, just a quick example. We do a lot of um, uh, home use tests, which again, a lot of times are concept tests. So in this case here, this is just an example um, of a recurring diary that somebody would do. For instance, if they were doing a chewing gum study or maybe it's toothpaste, um, you know, we'd have them maybe test several different products, rotate those over, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever the study length happens to be. And you can start with things like, what did you like about this product? What did you dislike about this product? And then you can dive into, and again, with diary entries, you can ask a lot of closed ends as well, if you like to, um, just because you will have a lot of diary entries and it could fall into the qual territory of being, you know, over 100 from a sample size. Okay, so you may have a lot of numbers and you can average those out um, using our mathematical tools on the and analysis tools on the platform. So again, lots of different question options, um, closed end, open ends, 
wise, all that good stuff. So that's a little bit of a home use diary. By the way, we do a lot of video on home use tests as well. So analytics, as we kind of wind down here in this little um, presentation today, I did want to talk about the things you just saw. You saw a lot of testing tools. Now what happens after that? Are there analysis tools on the platform that you can use to break the data down? I'm going to start off with the moderating tools first. Note that on our platform, you have the ability to tag things, make notes on any submission. You can sort things by segment, by question, by question level, by respondent, by demographics. You've got all the tools you could possibly want to, to cut the data. But you've got the ability to, to um, make notes. You can probe. So you've got a back room between uh, You've got a back room between clients and the moderator that is private from the respondent. And then you've also got an open channel between the respondent and the moderator for probes and responses there. We've got the ability to save things to what we call a client newsfeed for sharing with clients of key submissions. Um, we've got a, a video maker that if there's a video response, you can grab a clip there, or you can even throw a visual in as well. So it doesn't have to be a video. It can be a collage that goes into a video that you want to show 25 collages in a little reel. Um, all right. And then the next thing I want to show you quickly here is the fact that we've got heat maps. I talked about a concept and concept markup earlier. So look at it this way. This is the ability to see all the markup um, on an idea. And you can unbundle this and make this better. By the way, we've got an opacity meter. So it's a little difficult to read some of these words. So on a relative basis, you can dial this back a little bit and see what these words are behind the sort of thicker red or green colors, okay? So that's looking at everything and not the opacity meter in full strength there. Then you can look at this and see here's the positive. So if you click on this green button here, this will show you just the positive. You can click on the red and it'll show you just the negative. So it makes it a little bit easier to do any kind of analytics you want there. It also gives you the opportunity to go ahead and um, you know, uh, segment it or look at it by demographic, okay? So next, I want to show you very quickly the fact we've got customizable charts. So any of the quant tools that you saw, we've got the ability to turn these into pie charts, bar charts, line charts, et cetera. So each and every closed-ended question has the ability to be charted and graphed on the platform. Okay. So simply at this point, I'll move on to our word clouds. So you can take any and all questions and combine them together or go question by question level. And again, you segment and demo cuts to do word clouds and, and do data analytics, text analytics from that standpoint. All right. And then final thoughts, um, key things here. When you're testing concepts, you wanna rotate those over multiple days. Um, you know, you don't wanna bombard them with too many ideas at once. As I've told you before, you get fatigue and blur. So again, six, eight, 10 concepts, rotate those over, you know, two, three, four days. Um, and definitely rotate those. And again, we've got that unique tool called True Rotation that gives you completely balanced and algorithmically driven uh, rotation of concepts and ideas. Try different methods and tools. Um, I've showed you a bunch today. You got all kinds of different lines of questioning, pragmatic and narrative and other styles that we can show you at any point in time. Um, another key thing is recruiting great respondents. So use a great recruiter, get great respondents, and be generous with incentives. You're asking people to spend 90 to 120 minutes usually in three to four day concept tests. Make sure you're incenting them properly, probably 125 bucks for three days. And nowadays it's about 150 for four. So be generous with incentives. You'll be rewarded with the fine commitment and in-depth commitment by your respondents. So with that said, this is the way to reach me. So this is my phone number. Take a screen capture of this if you can. This is my email address, our URL for our website, and uh, you know, hook up with me on LinkedIn. That'd be fantastic. So anyway, so this is the, the concept testing according to AHA and me. Uh, please reach out if we can help you out. And we've probably got a couple minutes now to go ahead and you know, let you ask any questions. I'll address anything in the chat uh, that you possibly have. So fire away and have a great day. Reach out if we can help you in any way. Thank you.